So welcome to the new episode of Class Setup and Tips, where I'm going to go through all four of the main classes, taking a look at different weapon setups, different gear, and tips and tactics you can put into effect to get the most out of each class in different situations on the battlefield. Today, we're going to start off by taking a look at the Assault class. Now, we're going to begin by taking a look at weapon setups. Now, of course, the great thing about the Assault class is it can practically be used in any situation. So, of course, giving you guys just one weapon setup wouldn't be to any real advantage. So, we're going to go ahead and break this down into three sections. We're going to have close range, medium range, and long range weapon setups. Each one giving you the advantage on the battlefield. Now, when it comes to close quarters combat, there is always one weapon I will turn to, the Ace-23. Now, I must admit, it's a close call between that and the AEK-971. Of course, the AEK is another great close quarters weapon. High rate of fire, 30 round magazine, great damage model, all the things you want to see in a close quarters assault rifle. But I sometimes find that high rate of fire can put you out of ammunition a little bit too quickly. So the H23's slower rate of fire of 770 rounds per minute still gives you a great advantage on the battlefield. But you don't find yourself putting way too much ammunition downrange and running out of bullets too quickly. Now taking a look at the attachments I run for this weapon for these type of situations. Starting off with the optics, I always take a Coyote Red Dot Sight. Of course, we all know at close range, you don't want to be running a sight with a high magnification. It makes zooming in and out very, very difficult. So the red dot sights with no magnification is a great sight to use for close range. And of course, a Coyote over any other RDS, I think is the best because of its very thin bezel. You don't want a sight that's very large, very bulky, taking up half your screen and blocking your field of view. Now, as well as this, I always recommend taking the laser slash light combo. Why not take two accessories when you're given the opportunity? Of course, the light will give you the chance to blind your opponents momentarily, giving you those few seconds to get those all-important first shots off on target. And the laser, as we all know, increases hip fire accuracy. So when you're running and gunning at close range, you want to make your shots as accurate as possible when firing from the hip. Now, when it comes to the barrel, I will always recommend a suppressor. Now, out of the three suppressors, they are all exactly the same, but I always take the R2 suppressor for the sole reason it's the biggest and most badass looking. Now, of course, at these close range battles, people are always going to be watching the minimap, so you want to give yourself the advantage of not giving your position away every time you fire. And of course, in Battlefield 4, we all know now that suppressors no longer reduce damage, they just reduce range and velocity. So at very close range, there is no real disadvantage to taking a suppressor. Now, when it comes to choosing a grip for your weapon, this can sometimes be a little bit confusing, but I always recommend the Ergo Grip at close range. This actually increases hip fire accuracy by 50%, so it's designed for run and gun situations. You'll find one in every two of your bullets hitting the target more often when you're firing from the hip, so this gives you a massive advantage when firing from close range. Now, to accompany the Ace-23 into close combat, I also take the G-18. For the pretty obvious reason, it's fully automatic. Having a secondary weapon that can put 1,100 rounds per minute downrange is obviously going to be pretty advantageous, especially with a 30% damage model at close range. Now, the accessories for this are the flashlight and the suppressor for the exact same reasons I mentioned for the Ace-23, but I actually take the Ghost Ring sight because at this kind of range, I don't think the Mini or the Delta sight have any advantages, and again, you want to have sight to take up as little of your screen as possible. Now, finally, for this setup, I would also recommend the RGO impact grenades. Of course, at close quarters, you always want to have grenades that give your enemy no opportunity to get away the impact as soon as they hit the ground. So the RGOs are a great advantage at close range. Now, moving on to the medium and long range assault setups, I'm going to do both of these together because they are very similar apart from a small tweak in weapon setup. Now, for medium range, I would always recommend the Scar H. This has got to be arguably one of the best assault rifles in the game with an incredible damage model of 34 maximum and 25 minimum. So, the minimum damage this weapon could do is actually on par with the maximum damage of the other assault rifles. So, it gives it an incredible advantage when it comes to pumping out damage. But, of course, the disadvantage of this weapon is its magazine capacity. With only a 20 round magazine, 21 if you've got one in the chamber, 10 rounds less than any other assault rifle at medium to close range can and put you on the back foot. Now the 620 rounds per minute rate of fire makes this thing very handleable at medium range. When it comes to long range you may find yourself a little bit off target and of course that slow rate of fire at very close range can put you at a little bit of a disadvantage if you come across something like an AEK which is exactly why I picked this weapon for medium range. It's a bit of a middle ground weapon great for these type of situations. Now taking a look at the attachments, especially the optics, this is where you're going to have to make your mind up for yourself. Now for me personally, I still find a red dot sight very effective at medium range, especially the Coyote sight 
for all the reasons I've mentioned previously. Now, some people may argue a 3.4 times scope or an ACOG sight will give you a better advantage at medium range. But again, if you come across someone at very close range, it will put you on the back foot. So personally, I find a red dot scope is still very effective at medium range, and it still gives you that massive advantage at close range. Now, another option for your attachments is to take the two times magnifier. Now, of course, this would allow you to have your red dot sight for close range. And as soon as you see someone further away, you can flick up your magnifier and take out the those targets quite easily. Now another option for this is to take the canted iron sights. Now I've personally found taking an ACOG sight with a canted iron sights actually works better than the magnifier. You can switch between them very quickly and it makes things a little bit quicker when you're in these tight knit situations. Now when it comes to barrel attachments, I will always recommend the muzzle brake. This thing reduces muzzle climb by 25%. So if you're firing continuously on targets a little bit further away, it will help you keep your aim. Now of course the disadvantage of this, it actually adds a 30% penalty of automatic fire. So if you can keep this in burst mode or just tapping very gently, not going full auto, this can be a great attachment for medium range. Now again, when it comes to picking a grip, this can always be a little bit confusing. And this is where the difference between a medium and a long range setup really comes into play. Now for medium range, I would always recommend the stubby grip. This reduces the recoil of automatic fire by 15%. So if you're firing at a target a little bit of a distance away with, of course, the SCAR-H in automatic, it's going to help improve your accuracy. But if you're going for a long range setup, which I do argue the SCAR-H is capable of, I would take the angle grip or the folding grip. Now both of these reduce first shot recoil by 33%. So if you're firing at a target quite a long distance away, that first shot on target is always key. So 33% improved accuracy on that first shot is very, very important. Now, as I said, I definitely think the SCAR-H is capable of these long range engagements, but if you don't feel confident in that and you want to change your primary weapon, I would always recommend either the SAR-20 one, of course, with only 600 rounds per minute. This weapon is great at long range, great accuracy, great recoil management. And of course, at long range, speed isn't everything. So that bullpup setup won't be too much of a disadvantage. Or another personal favorite of mine, the L85A2. With a rate of fire of 800 rounds per minute, a little bit quicker than the SAR-21, but still great range, great accuracy. And again, on these bigger open maps, that bullpup system, which is a little bit slower to reload, isn't going to be too much of a disadvantage. Now, when it comes to gadgets for all three of these different sets, setups, you've got to remember first and foremost you're meant to be a medic. I never in any kind of situation take under barrel weapons. I think between your primary and your secondary weapon you've definitely got enough firepower. Now when it comes to close range matches and things like domination, team deathmatch, I always recommend taking the medic bag and this is the reason you can put this thing down in an area of high traffic, leave it there and rack up a lot of points. Now of course if you're playing something that's a long range battle, something like Conquest Large, players aren't going to be running over the same space continuously. You're not going to have those same areas of high traffic and density. So for long range battles, I actually recommend taking the medic pack that you can throw on a soldier. He can keep moving and you can still rack up those points. So it depends how busy the map is, where the soldiers are fighting to try and get as many points as possible with that medic pack or that medic bag. Now, if you are running with defibrillators, I have a few tips and tactics. You have a couple of options of how to use these things. You can either charge them up to 100% and revive your teammate, bringing him back to 100% health. Of course, the disadvantage here is he's dead on the ground. You've got defibrillators in your hand, spending a while charging them. You've got zero guns on the enemy. Or you can revive him straight away to 20% health, throw a health pack on top of his body, which will immediately start reviving his health. And that means straight away, you've got two weapons back in the game. You're firing. He's on the ground, he's got his weapon out, so I always find immediate revives with a health pack is a lot more advantageous than sitting there for a while, rubbing your defibrillators together with no guns on the enemy and making yourself a very easy target. Now that is all the tips and tactics and weapon setups I have for the assault class today. I know it's been a very long video, but I hope you have enjoyed it. If you would like to see more in this series, tell me in the comments below. Tell me which class you would like to see a setup video for next. And don't forget guys to support the video by hitting that like button, it does help me out a lot. But in the meantime guys, thank you for watching and I will see you soon.